So I am a developer at Coding Face, machine learning developer. And for me, it's very interesting that the trend that machine learning is taking over the last couple of months, maybe a year, open source is becoming much more important. Uh, we have more models than ever. People are sharing, community is getting bigger. I, we are on a spring of machine learning and it's a beautiful moment to be creating all together. But th this is what Hoging Face is for, for this collaboration to be done on a single space. And we can gather all this knowledge, all these uh, computer resources, so everything that, that we can from these huge companies such as Google, Meta, NVIDIA, and the same Hoging Face. You can use all what they are creating in the form of portraying models and use it for our own cases. And also our, ourselves, if we're creating something, we can share it with everybody in all over the world. So this, this is a very, very interesting moment in the history of machine learning. It's, this, it's, a, it's a, we're living on a spring. So it's very, very nice to be here. And Huin Face is one of the most important, if not the most important company in the open source machine learning. So yes, it's where we're living an amazing time. And what I want, what I want you for you to understand today, to see, to learn, is how can you gather, you can leverage all the power that Coin Face can provide for you in different forms, in education, in sharing, in creating your own profile, your own career in machine learning, sharing what you're creating, but also get what, what others are creating, and you can leverage those models, those data set spaces. So please, uh, if you could please, I will leave in the chat a small link under what Minjen is leaving. Here is a link, it's menti.com and then a small code. If you could please click on this link and then answer this question, please. So I can know more or less what kind of audience we're having today. So the question is regarding holding face, have you heard about it? Have you heard about it but never use it? Or you have even tried it? So let's let's wait for a couple answers so we can see where we can go with this. It seems like it's very interesting audience because it's yeah, it's very, 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 we have a lot of people that have used it, a lot of people that have never used it. And in the middle, we have like, it's like a nice bell distribution here, <laughs> but perfect. Okay, so I can see that most of you have heard about how you face. You have even listened about it. Perfect. So now, if you go back to this, to, to the link that I, that I sent to you, I have changed the question now. This is now regarding radio. Radio, please, the, exactly the same question. Have you heard about it? You, you have heard about it, but never used it, or you have even tried it. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, now, if you could put please in your in your chat for last question, if you could please put in the chat, what have you created? What is the most advanced thing that you have done with machine learning? For example, I did a classifier using PyTorch. If you could write that, please, that would be very useful. If you have never done anything with machine learning, you can put it. I have never used. I have never done anything with machine learning. I'm starting to learn. If you could put in the chat, please, what is the most advanced thing that you have done with machine learning and what, what a library were you using? For example, OinFace, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, R, I was using R, for example, MATLAB. I don't know. Please put in the chat, what is the most advanced thing that you have done? If you have done anything, if you haven't done anything, it's okay. So let's wait in the chat to see some, some some answers to see more or less the audience. I promise this is the last question. In the meantime, we can see that we have most of you, practically everybody have never used radio, which is okay. Now I can see where we can go with this topic. So, okay, we have some answers on the chat. For the ones that haven't put your answer in the chat, please write what is the most advanced thing that you have done using machine learning and with what library? PyTorch, scikit-learn, uh, you can even write R, something like that. 
Also, you have never done anything with machine learning. It's okay. Please put it. This is useful for me to know more or less where to go. Okay, so let's see. Semantic search with going face is bird model, Stephen. Perfect. I, I am a I'm a lover of of, <laughs> of S birds. <laughs> Sentence transformers are very useful. Actually, I just uploaded a new a new blog post last week. You seen on how to train and fine-tune transformer sentence transformer models, which is very useful. <laughs> if you want to check it, it's very nice. There I describe more or less. I, I, there I describe how to fine-tune or train a sentence transformer model. It's very interesting. They are very useful for 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 semantic search. Very useful. Okay, so okay, Stephen has uh -huh, he's used semantic search. Julie has used to have used GPT-3, text normalization with PyTorch, birds, for NER, information extraction, all these documents. Okay, so I have, so we have more or less an intermediate level audience. Excellent. Space for information extraction. I've never done anything with machine learning. Perfect. Image segmentation, virtual private floats, stock prediction. Marvels, excellent. Perfect. Audio posting with button. Excellent. Now, now I think I, I know I promised that this was the last question, but now I would like somebody from the audience to tell me when you this do, for example, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see who mm, 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 Shinsu is telling that you did an image classification using Python. Are you using transfer learning? Or oh, anybody that, that, that you could please write here. Are you using transfer learning? Are you fine tuning models when you're doing this machine learning that you're creating? Are you using machine learning? Are you using, are you using transfer learning? Or are you uh, initiating the weights from random for all these questions that you have done? You tend to fine tune, transfer learning. Please, you can also write, I don't use transfer learning. It's okay. It's okay. I have never used it. I'm training them from scratch, for example. So you could please put if you're using transfer learning for your creations. Hello. Hi. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, uh, my mic wasn't functioning. So uh, I was using TensorFlow. I built a base model uh, using CNN, and then I compared with my transfer learning using VGG and mobile mobile net. So yeah. Perfect. And where where did you get this model for? To which you apply? Where where did you get the pre-trained model? Where I got this, it was I was just googling it. Then I just got mobile net. So I just imported mobile net. Then transfer learn from. The last few layers from from github or from where from where sorry uh, where did you get the the weights did you get them from GitHub? it was from imagenet <clears throat> ah, imagenet okay yeah oh, okay perfect thank you thank you very much somebody yeah. else that wants to tell me thank you very much so somebody else that wants to tell me where are you getting your pre models please for example here we got that uh you that, that he, he searched for, for the weights from Google and then go the path. Somebody else here want to, to share what did you get your weights? Good morning. Yeah, hi, morning. This is Daniel um, um, from SAP. And um, we actually do use Hacking Face already in a lot of our teams and projects. Um, so we're pretty happy with the with the library so far. We also okay. have some more detailed feedback. Uh, maybe we can share later, which sometimes could be better. But um, overall, we mostly use Hacking Face for, for pre trained models. Perfect. OK. Thank you very much, Daniel. Is somebody else here not using maybe Hoin Face? Maybe we are using the TensorFlow Hub or PyTorch Hub or, or Kaggle. I think Kaggle has more serious. OK. Okay, okay, perfect. I can see that. Oh, yeah. So now, this is what Daniel sure is great. 
fui en Who In Face. For those that do, haven't heard about it, or maybe you have heard about it, but never use it, Who In Face has the biggest collection of, of models. 64,000 models for you open source to use it, to use them whenever you want. And these are powerful models. We're talking, for example, here of the Deberta model, which has been one of the uh, newest models that have performed very well. So you have it here, the way you even have other Devertas, the other versions of the Vertas, code Bert. No, sorry, the Berta B2 large, B3 base, B2 X large, and so on. So this model was developed by Microsoft researchers. But you also have models uh, from the same home phase, from the Transformers library of home phase. And you have from other different members of the community, we're talking before about semantic search. So we have here the sentence transformer models that are very useful for this, and which I'm, I, li I like a lot these models. So yes, we have a lot of models and you can even filter between them. For example, somebody here was telling that uh, she uses image segmentation. So for example, if I click here on the task, the task are what you want to perform your, with, with machine learning, what is your goal? In this case, for example, I want to do image segmentation. That is my task. And I can get, for example, a model from Facebook, from NVIDIA, from uh, several other organizations. I haven't seen this before. One from Intel, interesting, okay. So we have several models here that you can use for different tasks, image classification, visual transformers, for example. Um, I don't know, for natural language processing, you can use also very interesting models. For example, if you want to use one for translation, the T5 base is very used. So you have it here. Uh, if you want to use for sentence similarity, you will see that the sentence transformers models are the reigning ones. They are very nice and very good. If you want to use, I don't know, maybe summarization, here are some models that are already fine tuned for summarization and ready to be used. Pegasus Exom, Bar Large CNN. So, what I want to tell you is that here in Coinbase, you will find practically any model that you want to use. You don't have to use Google anymore. You can search it here. You can search for the model here and you can use it to then apply transfer learning and use it for your own application, for your own task with your own data. So this is, I don't know, maybe maybe you guys that are younger than me, uh, for, for you it could be kind of new this, uh, like, ah, oh, it's okay, nice. But, but for me, that have been for some years in machine learning, having this enormous amount of models for me to use at any moment is, uh, is awesome. It's, it's, uh, that's why I'm telling you that we're on a spring of machine learning. So this is a great moment. You have all these resources in a single space. You don't have to Google it. You don't have to look for the weights in a, in a drive repository or in a, in a, I don't know, maybe in GitHub and several spaces, several places, I don't know. It, it, they, before it was kind of difficult to find these weights. Now you can find them in here, okay? So you have models. You, you are a user of PyTorch, you can, only use models that were trained with PyTorch. You are, you are a user of Spacey. You can click here and you have 202 Spacey models. So this is, uh, this is something that is changing the industry, something that is being used by the community a lot. It's something amazing. I, I really love it. I'm very happy with we have been what we are creating at Coin Phase. And also we have data sets. Yes. So you have models. Huh? Now you can use data sets to train your models. You can also have them here. Almost 9,000 data sets available for you to use. More than in Kaggle, more than any other place, you will find them here. And each day we have more data sets. There's a, a very talented team in Sign Hoying Face that is only dedicated to, to uploading more data sets, to, to sharing the best data sets here. Okay, also with the models. So it's very nice. You can download, download them with a single click. It's very, very simple, very, very nice. And now for what, uh, for, for, from the questions that I asked you before, I have seen that you have, some of you know home face, but practically everybody here have never used radio. And that is very interesting to me. Radio is now part of the community of home face. It was an independent company. It was bought by, the, by home face. Hoying Face is, is, is growing a lot. It's, it's, it's brutal what is being created at Hoying Face. And great, you know, this company to create demos, machine learning demos, 
demos for your machine learning applications was bought by Coinface. Also, I don't know if you recently look at this, but also let me just close my window because it's raining and, <laughs> and can be a little bit distracting. Just a second. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So we were talking about demos. Now, Radio is a company, maybe you have heard about Streamlit before. Streamlit. Uh, Streamlit is, a, is also a company, it's also a library that you can use for free, freely create more, uh, demos for your machine learning applications. So, Radio does the same. You can create demos for your machine learning applications, but its philosophy is to make things very simple to easily create with, with a couple of commands, create a very nice demo. So it's very, it's very nice to use, it's very simple. And here you can later upload your models to, you, you can later upload your demos to the spaces to home in face. The spaces is the newest part of our family. With the spaces, you basically are hosting a demo forever, forever and for free in home in face. Have you have you seen the Dali Mini before? Who, 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 who here has used Dali Mini or heard about it? You can, you can put it in the, in the chat or or open your mic with no problem. Have you ever used, for example, Dali Mini or have you used uh, Animegan? Come on, folks, help me here. Can you hear me well? Because the, the rain is very hard, and I don't know if it's bothering you. <laughs> with my... I can hear you pretty clearly, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, yes, Dali Mini has been very famous. Exactly. So he, this is the space for Dali Mini. It was made using radio. Yes. So something interesting here is that each demo, each space here, each model, each data set uh, is a Git repository. So for example, this is the space for that limit. And if I go to the files tab here, I can see exactly what the files are inside this rip. It's a Git rip. You, you have commits, you have branches. Here I only have one, but you could have more. You have pull requests in the community tab. You can open discussions. Actually, there are a lot of discussions open. Interesting. And inside, inside files, you can see how they created this, this demo. For example, if I go into README, I can see how it was created. Uh, for example, this is the metadata for the, for the space. And then it seems to be a JavaScript file here. Oh, I, I should. Well, here is the raw version of it. Nice. I can download it and I can use it. So it's open source. I think of kind of like uh, yes, the GitHub. We like to, to call ourselves like the GitHub of machine learning. So here's a, a small question, but quick, I will answer it. How do you compare radio with Streambit? Radio has the, it has the philosophy to do things simpler. You can do it very easily. Let's, we will create a demo actually right now, but I can tell you before that, that it's very simple to create very nice demos using radio with a couple of clicks. And it's very, very nice. I think it's easy to use than Streamlit. You can do more complex things in a Streamlit, but if you want to share something kind of quick with a nice interface, you, I, I would use radio. That is kind of the difference. But Streamlit is more customizable. So streaming is also older. So it, it, it has, it's very, very good. Both are very good. So for example, okay. So uh, we have a lot of demos. Let's see, let's search for one of using radio. Okay, so this one is also using radio. It's called OBIT. That's the name that Adirik, member of the community, put to, to his demo, his or her, or her demo. And 
All this was created using Gradle. As you can see, it has a title, a nice description that I think is using a markdown. And then it has this, something where you can easily click and move. And you have examples. This is very relevant. You have examples. For example, here I simply can click an example like this one. And it would be input into the interface of demo of, of radio. And it currently is loading the, the, the model. It is inputting the I have never used this one before, so I don't know what it does. It seems like it does object detection using the visual transformer all, which is kind is new actually. It's very, very new. And well, it can take you some time, maybe because a lot of people are using it. But in this particular case, I think it's because the model is kind of 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 or it's it's a heavy model, or maybe it's my internet. I don't know. But okay, we can we can wait for it. But in the meantime, we can go and see other spaces. I don't know. What do you think of radio at this moment? You can have very interesting things. Any comments? Ah, thank you very much, Minjen. <laughs> you already uh, share it. Okay, I'm still waiting for this one. But you can all the you can also see other interesting spaces. For example, I don't know video transformers. No, no, this one seems nice. Feta IKEA. <laughs> I, this this ones I have never seen before. I'm doing it on the on the spot. It doesn't seem like this is a radio. This this should be a streamed one. Let's wait for it. Uh, um, when would you want to use radio over flask? Well, radio is much simpler to use than flask. It's much more simpler. Uh, this is actually Fetai case also a radio. So it's easier to use and you can deploy it on the spaces of coin phase and have it forever here very easily. It's much more simpler. The process is much more simple. For example, he, again, I don't know what this does. It's the first time I see and look at this. Uh, I wanted for it to have an example, but it doesn't have an example. So I would better leave it. So this is radio. Basically, you can create very interesting demos very easily. And we will now create a small demo together. These are here are examples. So you have videos. Seems like you can have videos. This space demonstrates the use of hybrid transformer based models for video classification that operate on CNN feature maps. Interesting. Okay, cricket shots. Wow. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> very nice. This, this, is, this is very nice. This is a state of the art. It's using very powerful models beneath it. And you, as you can see, you can express it quite nice using radio. I would say it's, it's quite nice. Well, well, okay, okay. Now we're looking. Ah, now they all finally, finally uh, give us the the results. And you can see here is detecting. This is a human face on the background. There's a rocket. There's a flag. There's a NASA badge. <laughs> very, very interesting. Eh? <laughs> very nice model. Okay, now now you can see that you can create very nice stuff. And now. Uh, Lastly, for, for even more, uh, this person is shaving and it's detecting that he's shaving his beard. So maybe you, you like this, this demo, right? And you say, hey, okay, you, you can look for the model it's using here. It's using a video transformers, train using Keras, interesting. And on files, again, you can go and see the app.py to review exactly what it, uh, how the demo crea was created. As you can see, it's very, very, very simple. This is practically all the demo, yes, for this. Of course, there's a lot of work on the model. There's a lot of work thinking on how to do it, but putting, creating a demo is very, very simple. As you can see, it's, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, like 20, uh, like 25 uh, lines of code. Very, very simple, and it's because it's, nicely indented but it's very simple to, to create a, a create a nice uh, demo like this one that this one is kind of complex so nice okay so any question until now what do you think what are your, your opinions on this is this interesting for you coffee mug spoon <laughs> very very nice 
well, please let me know in the chat what do you think in the meantime and as always google is google is our best friend so you want to learn more and go deep into radio you can simply uh write radio and and you will be able uh, actually here's a like radio versus stream it <laughs> very nice well you can go to the documentation and simply explore it you have a lot of examples there's a lot of tutorials i've always thought of coming face to be like a rabbit hole where you go inside of something and you start digging and digging and digging but Fortunately, we have a lot of resources for free and ready for you to, to use. For example, here in the, the documentation of, of radio is amazing. You have a lot of things. And also you have a lot of tutorials, how to do this, how to create one, how to create blocks, which is new. It's a new feature of, of, of radio. And it's very nice. So yes, you have a lot of, of open materials for you to use only by looking for radio on Google. And finally, as a as another uh, as another motivation for you to use radio, CPR here, CPR. So, for example, radio is gaining a lot of, of, of influence within the academic community. Yes, for example, the CPR of this year created a small tournament and ask for the participants of the conference to upload their models, the models they create, if they are creating a model, if they are sharing a model on the conference, for them to, to create a radio demo. Because what happens when, when you start using, what, what are the benefits of the demos? You, you can already imagine them, but the main benefits is that you can do reproducible research. Like for example, I'm actually creating a model and I'm sharing the weights publicly. It's open source. You can use my, model and you can try it with a couple of clicks so you can already see it you can a, a person for example a lot of people use dali mini without knowledge of the model beneath it so it's uh, it's getting a lot of people interested into machine learning and you know it's, it's making it easier for people to 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 try things and in this particular case the goal was for the creators of creators of models of new architectures to share what they are creating and and let people use it very quick. So there were three two spaces created using this using radio for this conference, for example. And these are very, very, very interesting spaces. They're using models ultra interesting because well it's it's uh, they were they were accepted in CBPR and they were uh, motivated to create the radio demo. So, so yes, you can find something. So a lot of very interesting things here, and and a lot of different conferences are starting to use radio for in order to to for, for participants to share what they're creating. Well, I don't understand what this does. <laughs> Generate label image, but you can see this is kind of complex, right? Like this is a a complex demo. Interesting. Ah, uh, I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> well, I, I will, I can bet this interesting gang cards. Generate human. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Wow. So generated a human with that pose. Okay. Well, this is very interesting. And you can try them very easily. For example, in this case, maybe you are interested in this particular space. So this person, uh, Yumin, Yumin J, is sharing what, what she is creating. And now we can go and search for what specific model she was using. Oh, she uploaded the model. Text to human is the name of the model. And you can use it also whenever you want, okay? I can go into the model and I can use it. Okay, so any question until now? Come on, folks. I don't know. What do you think? There are some questions on the um, Padlet. If you want to take a look, I can read them out to yes. you if you want. Ah, perfect. Okay. Uh, I can I can look for them. Well, uh, sorry, can you? You cannot yeah, look at me, right? The URL here. Okay. Sorry. I don't know what happened. 
it seems like uh, there was like a small explosion. <laughs> I, uh, the rain is very hard and I lost the I lost power, <laughs> but no problem. We can continue here. <laughs> Hope everything is okay out there. Yeah, let us know. If no, you no, no, no. Any time. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No, no, no. I'm just black, <laughs> but but everything all right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I can. I will go into the link to see the questions. And in the meantime, please enter into this link that I'm adding on the on the on the chats. Okay. Should the models of Glanohoim phase need to be comparable with uh, No, models should not be comparable with Nasomer library. We have models using Keras. We have models using Sklearn. For example, we, have, we are investing a lot in adding models for Sklearn. So you are welcome to add your models. How do you compare gradient? Okay. For the gradient demos, is the demo is the model hosted on the demo itself or is it hosted somewhere else that we need to call as an API? No, the, the demos are hosted in home phase, but also Gradio provides an API. For example, you can create your demo, upload it as a space to home phase, and it for free, it creates an API for you to use. It's very, very nice. So you can, for example, call your, your space from other places uh, using this API. I currently don't remember what is the name, but I can search for it like API Gradio Spaces. Really, Google is your best friend. You can ask the question you want. Well, you will find uh, interesting examples. I, I will need to look for that, but you can do that. Can you hear me well uh, right now? Yes. Sorry, sorry for for all these small questions. <laughs> yes, can. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So that those were all the questions. Now, back to the education toolkit I just shared to you. So this education toolkit is the basis for this democratization tool. So you can please click on the open collab, opening collab button, and it will take you to a collab where we can create right now in these moments our own space. In particular, please, I want you to run this pip install quiet radio first. And we will create a small demo right now for you to, to see how easy it is to create your own space using radio. So right now it's installing quite radio quietly. Everybody, uh, somebody, is somebody lost? Please let me know if you lost, uh, you lost me at any moment. What I did was simply to go into the link I put in the, in the chat, the educational toolkit. This is a, a tutorial on how to create your first your first demos using radio. And then I click on the open in Google Colab. Now inside this collab, I am running this pip install quite great. Okay. Now we have radio install. Now I will jump this. Uh, uh, let's go for with this one, the first one. So let's run this import NumPy as MP. And what and then run the second the second block. Import radio as YAR. Blah, 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 blah. You only have to run it, no problem. And what this is doing is creating our own demo right now, right, right on the spot inside the collab. Okay. So so a main difference between a streaming and, and radio is that radio can you can use radio very easily inside a Google Colab or inside any Python notebook, okay? Uh, it's, you can do this in Streamly too, but it's harder. It's harder. You have to, to import other libraries and so on. But with radio, you can do this natively, okay? You can import radio and use it right now on your Google Colab. That's why it's very useful and very nice. So is everybody here with me? Somebody is having problems? If it's okay, now you have this, a small, a small demo that was created right now here on the call. How are you doing? So, somebody get, got lost? Is everybody all right? <laughs> okay. 
Perfect. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, that is the link, the, the one that Professor Mingen has uh, shared. You can click in there and then go into open with Colab. You have a big bottom in, in there. So now, now that we created a small, this small demo, I will explain to you what we have done. Okay. So let's go into here. It says GR, that is radio, use interface. Okay. Interface. And inside interface, there are three arguments. This is very relevant. Only three arguments. That's all you need to create a demo using radio. Okay. So light has come back. <laughs> okay. So function, you need a function, you need an input, and you need an output. You can already think what we are doing here. So a function is simply a function. It doesn't have to be machine learning. It doesn't even have to be using cognitive phase model. You can do whatever you want. For example, in this case, we just create a, a function above that is called sepia. Sepia receives an image as an input, and then do some processing and outputs an image, okay? Inputs an image and outputs an image. And then inside does some magic, whatever, okay? We're not using machine learning, just some calculation using NumPy, okay? So now in the radio interface using function, I am telling it, we're, we're going to use the, the sepia function that we define above. And as input, we will be receiving an image, okay? This is a component. What component we're using? An image. And as output, an image. And it simply creates a small, a small demo. That's all. That receives an image that I can upload from my computer. And then it outputs something. So I don't have a, a <laughs> I don't have an image of a flower right now. So let's go to, to another demo. For example, this one is nice, right? I think. I will run it. Here we're creating a new function that is called generate tone. Okay. It receives three things as input. Note, a note, a octave, and a duration. Okay. And then it outputs. So, you know, machine learning models are like, a, you can think of machine learning as a box. And that box is simply a function. Okay. Each machine learning model is a function. It receives something and it outputs something. Okay. As simple as that. As that. So, here in this, in this model, it's not even machine learning, but we have a function that indeed receives something, a note, an octave, and a duration. And it outputs something, a sampling rate and an audio. All right. And now we create our own interface. Your interface, it receives the function called generate tones. And then I don't know why it's giving me an error. Well, it doesn't matter. This is the function. The function is called generate tone. And then it receives as inputs all this stuff. Okay. Function is the first argument, then inputs. And finally, outputs. So inputs is receiving three different inputs, a drop down, a slider, and a number. For those of you have, that have already used string, this makes sense, right? We have drop downs, sliders, and numbers. And in output, it will output an audio. So you can output text, you can output images, you can output audios, you can output a lot of stuff and you can also input a lot of stuff. If you launch this, this is what you get. Again, a demo straight on Google Colab. Uh, again, maybe <laughs> you're very young and, and, and you, you don't, you, for this, this could be a very simple to you, but for me, it's like, wow, this is <laughs> amazing. You, in, a, in a Google Colab, I can run this and create my own demo. It's, it's very simple, very nice. Uh, it's very, very, very interesting. And here I can have from this drop down menu, select the tone, the note, then the octave in a slider, and then the duration. I want it to last five seconds. Submit, and beneath the function is working and it's about to output something. What is going to output? It's an audio. Okay. So right now it is working, it's uh, using the function, it's inputting what we set to the function and now it's about to output something. Well, it, while it is done, we can go down and let's do a last, this is the last demo I promise. As, well, as you can see, it's very, very simple. Okay, so above we have the output. You cannot hear it, but if I click here, 
I receive exactly the note that I ask for. So you can see I can out audio. Now you can think of very interesting things to do, right? Maybe you can input an audio and output an audio. It is translating maybe from English to Spanish in these scenes, from audio to audio. So and this is very, 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 very nice. Any questions uh, right now that we can have? Let me go to the questions and answers. Okay, we have a new question. How the Python environment is preparing for a server? Like need to have a conda? Ah, that is very, very nice question. You can have a requirements.txt. That's all you need. You can share in your Git a requirements.txt. So for example, if I go to, let me go to the demo I created before. Let me see, let me see, for example, this one. So this is space using radio. I know this one is using stream, no, no problem, it's the same. What I have here are requirements txt in the files. And here I adding that I need this model, Hopgan, and also transformers. Okay, so when you share your demo to when you share your space, sorry, you have to create a requirements txt in this sense. And this is what Python, this is how the spaces are preparing the environment. Okay, so coming back to our cool collab, let's do a last demo. Just run this one. What this is doing, so Gradio is very integrated inside Holy Face, right? So you have you can create very easily a space using only inputting the name of the of the model, for example, in this case. And using this model, Facebook, fast speech to blah, 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 blah. Let's look for it. Where is it? This is the model. Oh, sorry, no. This is the model. Fast Facebook, fast speech, ta, ta, ta. This model we're going to use right now on our space. We're simply telling it, hey, Radio interface, but load. This is the new the new method that we're using. Load the home face from home face, the Facebook fast speech, ta ta ta, and then launch. And here we have it. As simple as that. I don't know what this does. <laughs> uh, okay. I am Omar. Maybe it will convert it into an audio. But well, okay. So as you can see, it's very integrated and you can try your, your models to go in phase very quickly. Maybe this model I created, maybe I created this model before and now I want to use it into a demo. I can very simply use it. So until now, do we have another question? You can, you can put it in the chat. What are you thinking about radio? Are you liking it? It's, I don't know, it's completely new, I know. But it's getting a lot of traction, very nice. So let me know, what do you think? Yeah, there are a couple more questions in the, the chat. The chat's, uh, oh. I mean, the uh, uh, Padlet, yep. Part of that. Great. Thank you. How do you specify computer requirements, sample instance type RAM GPU? Currently, so, uh, you can only use RAM. You cannot use GPUs for your spaces. Maybe you can use it a, in the paid version, but no, to be honest, nobody uses the paid version, and this is not the goal of going face. But maybe you can let me see if you can do. So everything that I'm showing it to you is 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 free. Okay, <laughs> that's important to, to say it. No, I no no. I think you cannot use GPUs. You you can contact going face the. Be the department if you want to use a GPU inside your space, but you cannot use it right now. You can only use RAM. And um, I don't know exactly how much RAM. I don't remember it, but you can. Uh, there's a specific number. Now, how do we use a model that is uploaded to convert in a radio demo? Do we need to add code in the radio? Ah, okay. So that is precisely what we did here. So uh, right now it, it is still uh, downloading the model. It is uh, working. But what here, what we did with only a single line of code, 
we are getting a model from, from home face and then we're trying it in a demo right now, right here on the spot with a single line of codes. So it's very, very integrated and you can easily use, a, you have a model in coin phase, you can use it and try it very quickly. And also download the model first and then load it. Or do you use it without downloading it first? Ah, okay, uh, so this question has another another part. It says that if you can try the, the, the models without downloading it, yes. You can use something that is called the inference API. The inference API, you can use very simply because, for example, like here I enter a Google model of a virtual transformer, and you have here on the right part of the model card a hosted inference API. And this is very nice. I like it a lot. It's also very interesting. For example, you can try the, the model right now here without having to download the model. You can do it straight on your on your browser. For example, I here I uploaded a model of a banana and it's classifying it into a banana. <laughs> so you can try the, the models on the spot on, on, on the browser without having to download it. Okay, so yes, this is very, very nice. You can do this for image models, but you can also do it for, for audio models. You can do it for practically any task we have here. So, so yes, yes, very, very, very interesting. For example, you have a text and you want to, the goal of life is mask. This is a model uh, for field mask. That is, that is the number of the task. It's a bird retrain model. And it is telling me that most likely is life. The goal of life is life. <laughs> bird is not very useful right now, <laughs> but, but you can try the model. And maybe I try it here and I can see that bird is not the answer for what I'm looking for. And you can then search for another model. It's really very interesting. We can compare models right now using this, for example, let's use a, a newer model and it's still Roberta, it's very nice. Exactly the same question. Ah, okay, here, here, we, here we have a better answer. The goal of life is happiness, immortality. Right? I don't know what that they used to train it, but your, the goal of life is yours. <laughs> a very nice liberation. It was kind of on a Buddhist text. <laughs> but you can you can use this there. You, you can try the models right here. Very nice. So coming back to your question, can you use ready to load a model from anywhere on the web? Yes, you can use a model from the from the uh, from the TensorFlow library, from the PyTorch library, from your GitHub account. You can as you can as you see before, as you saw before, I don't even use machine learning in the first demos. I create a, a small function using NumPy and, and that's all. Very, very, very simple. So yes, you can use whatever you want. How do these people make money then? What is the catch? <laughs> there, there's no catch. The, the, more, the money, the, the coin face, as you can see in the pricing solutions, this is mainly for organizations. So for example, when an organization, a big company wants to do the, the inference API that I showed you before, a lot of companies use it uh, and they, are power, they can power it with GPUs and they can do very quick inference. So yes, the money comes from there, from, from charging organizations, companies. <laughs> so no problem. There's no catch for any user. There's a pro plan, but it's like more like a symbolic. And it gives you a nice batch that says pro and Kind of like GitHub Pro plan. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So now you can build your first demos. Let's very quickly, maybe you, you won't have enough time right now, but we can upload this to a space. So, so it can be forever, forever on whole phase. I'm going to do it real quick. I can go here into new space. It will ask me the name. I will tell it, try. I just a small name. I can use the owner. For example, I can use an organization. Then I can choose a license. For example, let's use this. Then you can choose a stream rate, radio, or static. And we, we will have more. We will have more. This is on the building. So we, we, we will have much more options in the future. It's very nice. Home face is working day by day on creating more very nice tools without catch. 
And here, I have my own space, all right? I can go to files and I can clone. This is a repo, so I can clone it, okay? I can clone it, for example, I, let's do it real quick. I don't know if you will be able to see it. Okay, let me go zoom. Oh no, you won't you won't be able to see it. But I can I can simply clone this with git clone as any git repo. Git clone and using this this link, I can download it. Okay, but right now you have you can also as with GitHub, GitHub you can use the user interface. Here I will put add file, create a new file. This file is going to be app.py, which is the name that uh, the spaces use to search for the main file. And here I'm only I will only copy this code. Where to use this one? Let's upload. Use this one. Okay. Commit directly to main. You can see it's, uh, it's Git, very similar to GitHub. I'm doing a commit here. And now I have uploaded this demo, Go Radio. And it's think here you can see in orange building, it is creating our space. So we have to wait. We could have an error. Let's see, let's see what happens. It's also very nice because if you have an error, it would tell you right here what the error is. So you can debug very quickly. So any questions right now while we wait for a space to be created? As you can see, it's very simple to create a space. Here I can create also requirements. For example, I can add a upload file. Sure. Sorry, I can create file requirements.txt and I can add transformers gradient numpy. For example, I know I'm not using numpy, but just as, as an example. And that's it. It is building itself. In the meantime, do you have any question? Let me know, please, in the question and answer. And I will check it right now. I'm looking to see if there's any mistake. It seems all right. Okay. Let's wait for it. Would you be able to demo a cost effect model? Yes. Yes. This is no, no problem. Anything that you can go that you can add into a function, you can put it in a radio demo. Nice. So it's still building, but now we can see it's, it's already adding an interface. Very nice. And we can start trying it. Well, it's, it's still on the building, so let's wait a little bit more. So now, before I know it's we are about 20, but just as a small uh, Additional point while we wait for this. Remember, please, that you can search in Google for whatever content you want. If you want to learn how to use radio, use, just write radio. Go to the documentation. There are a lot of examples. You want, for example, something that I recommend a lot if you want to get into transformers, which, uh, as you know, transformers are currently the heart of machine learning, of, of modern machine learning. You simply can go into transformers. This is a trick that no, not a lot of people know. And I will share it with you. But the Transformers documentation is very nice. It's kind of like a big tutorial. So if you go through all the, the, the documentation, you will learn a lot. How to do text classification, how to use a tokenizer, how to propose data, how to share a model. I don't know. I use Amazon SageMaker, I train using several TPUs. I don't know. Whatever you want, you can find it here. Okay. So that's one tip number one. You can go into Transformers documentation and go uh, page by page. That's very nice. You can go also into Google and search for radio or for whatever you want to learn. Now, tip number two is to, and this is also something that a lot of people don't know, and it's a shame, but you can go into the blog, Coinface blog. The Coinface blog has a lot of information, of very interesting information. For example, somebody was asking for psychic learn. We introduce a scopes that is an integration between scikit-learn and the whole face hub. <laughs> so you can go here and, and learn about this. For example, you want to deploy a visual transformer in Kubernetes. Nice. You can, uh, my own blog here that train and fine tune sentence transformers models. You can use it, you can learn here. Okay. 
So the blog has a lot of very valuable information. A lot, a lot of time is being uh, used into, into this. For example, you want to do proximal policy optimization, reinforcement learning, you can learn it here. Here's the tutorial. Very nice. So yes, tip number one, go to the transformers documentation. Tip number two, go into the blog. And tip number three is to go into the documentation of coding phase overall. Because coding phase, as you can see, has the spaces, has models, has a data sets. That is the hub. But also coding phase has a number of different libraries, open source libraries that you can use. The most famous one is transformers. Yes, but we have also, for example, Accelerate. You want to train your models and accelerate them using TPU? Here you can use it. You want to use the optimum uh, library, for example, to use a specific hardware to optimize your models? You can do it here. You want to use the evaluate library to evaluate uh, of different forms your data sets or your models? You can use it here, right? So go and explore these, these, these different libraries. Myself, I will explore the transformers tokenizers and accelerate. Yes, and these libraries are, are made by a genius, a lot of very, very intelligent people, and it's very, very interesting. So that's those are my, my three tips. And now if we go back, finally, finally it's running. It's no, long, no longer a building, it's already running. And we have it green, and hello, I am Omar. And it will, I think I will, it will create an audio with that. I don't know what the model does. Let me, let me play it. Hello, I am Omar. Hello, yes. I am Omar. <laughs> it says what, what I wrote. You cannot hear it. But well, that's all for my part. Thank you very much. I will quickly go to see if there's another question. Oh, yes, I will answer very quick. Can the spaces repo be synced to a GitHub repo, for example, using GitHub Actions? No, you cannot use GitHub Actions in the, in the, in the radio repo, but you can explore it. It's, seem, it's using Git. So I don't know, you can write something interesting there, but GitHub, GitHub Actions or something like Actions are not inside the, the spaces currently, but it's on the build. A lot of those stuff is being built right now. I don't know, maybe that could come later. And finally, is there a limit to how many demos can we build within the spaces? No, you can build as much as you want. They will always be free. Our goal is to democratize machine learning. And this is a, a step towards that. So yes, thank you very much. I don't know, uh, Professor Mingen, if there's anything else, let me know if there's another question that I missed, but thank you very yeah. much for your time. I think uh, let's first thank Omar for his hour and uh, teaching us a lot of demonstrations. Please help thank. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we'll give you guys a couple minutes to ask your questions. Uh, please help out. Uh, I think uh, Omar has invested a lot of time and it's great to see all of you on camera uh, uh, presenting your faces so that people can see each other. That's always very nice. Um, Thank you. Just to uh, quickly advertise that, uh, you know, this is part of um, a lot of different activities that we do here in Singapore in the NLP community. Um, Daniel, myself, and a number of other professors are uh, trying to knit the NLP community together, and it's growing very fast. So uh, please do uh, help uh, sign up uh, to receive more announcements if you're a member of the Sing mailing list, which I will uh, put the link on for uh, just a second here. Um, then it's also a really good idea because um, you will be able to post. Um, so uh, if you also go to the the demo tour notes, which is right here on the uh, chat, uh, you can find the link on it as well. So at the top, uh, you can find the Sing mailing list. I'll just also put that on um, the chat here. It's just a Google group, so uh, you can uh, navigate there. And uh, earlier, uh, Violetta also uh, mentioned the Hugging Face Discord group. So if you use Discord, uh, you might uh, go to uh, that community to uh, learn more about what's going on uh, from the developers directly themselves. So I've pasted that link in as well. Okay, great. So um, again, the notes I have been busy compiling while I've been muted, I, they're not complete, but if you could help out and uh, fill in whatever you're missing, uh, that would be great. Uh, Omar, are you okay? Uh, is Hugging Face okay to let this be put on YouTube so other people can refer to it? 
Yes, no problem, no problem. Okay, so uh, with uh, everyone's blessing here, we'll put this proceedings up on YouTube and also link uh, the documentation that we're compiling together. Um, it's an edible document right now. So if you have additional questions, you can write them in the QA on Padlet, okay? And then uh, once you have those questions, I will try to compile all of these uh, additional questions like uh, the one over here on can we run this API offline? And maybe Omar can also answer those uh, if we don't get a chance to do that in this session. I don't have any further comments, so I'll let Omar uh, take over the last couple minutes uh, before we break. Thank you very much, Professor. And uh, this is very interesting what you're creating. It's very, very interesting. And please uh, count with us inside Holy Face. So our goal is uh, democratize machine learning. And our tools are for free. And that is very relevant to be clear on that. It's open source, it's free. And we have this own goal. The people inside Holy Face have this uh, goal at their, at their mind all the time. So we just want to make machine learning to reach everybody. So what, I do, what you are doing here that now I'm looking at it, is very, very interesting. And please, Professor Miguel, Daniel, whoever here wants to collaborate more with Holy Face, let us know. Let us know in this call how can we help. There are a lot of interesting initiatives, and a lot of stuff is not being done yet. So it's not uh, written on paper. But let us know what you want to create. Let us know what you're doing. Uh, create, collaborate, share, uh, and and you will uh, uh, find interesting things uh, for for students. This is very very interesting. Uh, and whoever wants to create or collaborate in any way, let us know. I don't promise anything, <laughs> but you will find something interesting with it. So thank you very much. So just to reiterate, if you want to get in touch with Omar, here's his Twitter handle. So uh, please, if you're an educator like myself or anyone else who would like to network and work with Hugging Face, um, please connect with him and uh, maybe he can pass your queries over to the the other parts of the Hugging Face team. And uh, with that, I think we can bring the session to a close. Let's thank Omar again for his time. It's 11 p.m. or something like that and um, you know, over in Colombia. So uh, we thank him for visiting from the other side of the world and gracing our, our sunny tropical region in Singapore and everyone else who's attending in this time zone uh, from wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for coming. Have a good day, night, or evening ahead. Take care, everyone. Thank you.